The Atlantic, home to many shipwrecks, big or small, one stands out from the crowd, almost resting at 12,500 feet or two and a half miles down lays the behemoth shrouded in darkness, an ocean liner that defied how ships would be built in the future. A ship that one might call unsinkable back in the day, towering above the sand and silt of the Atlantic Ocean is the remains of Titanic's bow. A gravesite one might call it, but since we last saw it in 2005, or 18 years ago, a lot has changed in and around the wreck itself. This is your host Rick from the channel you know as Zom Games, and in this video, we will be diving into the current state of the ship, what stories it tells us, and how it would look like in the future. All footage used in this video is from Ocean Gate, the same company that owned the Titan submarine. I will be using Ken Marshall's illustrations and other illustrations to demonstrate how the wreck has changed throughout the years and to show deterioration. Some of the footage that might be used might be also from James Cameron, so make sure to check out their expedition on the History Channel if you can. Now, without further ado, let's get right into the video. The wreck site of the Titanic is a rather hostile place where sea currents wreak havoc on sea life and on the ship itself. As seen in these photo and illustrations of the wreck, you can clearly see what damage the currents of the sea had done to the wreck. The forward mass had collapsed in itself and no longer towers above the well deck. Rewinding back a bit, and onto the hull of the ship, the hull itself has started to fold outwards. This is especially recognizable on the breakup zone of Titanic's bow. As you can see, the outward shell of Titanic or the hull has begun to fold outwards. Another prominent feature of the bow is the gash on the side of Titanic. This gash has deteriorated and has worsened throughout the years. It has noticeably corroded even further, making it even bigger than it was back in 2005. The enclosed promenade has also began to cave in, and the sheets of metal that used to make up the enclosed promenade has fallen off near the breakup zone. This has now exposed the support beams that were holding up the deck above B-deck. The A deck, or what we ship historians call them, the boat deck, doesn't look much better than the B deck. As you can clearly see, hardly of the recognizable lifeboat davits are not present there anymore. About at least three or four of them are still attached to the boat deck. Now I will be going into speculations and theories on to what would have happened to those later in the video. Now we move further front of the ship at the hawse hole. You can see the anchors are still virtually the same as they were in 2005. As for the foxhole, the rusticles have further expanded outwards. Now what is a foxhole or a sawhole? Well, it's basically a mooring line. This little hole at the very front of Titanic was mostly used for tying the ship to port and sometimes even used to lower Titanic's anchor. This is further proven by the massive anchor crane that was swayed forward due to the impact the ship suffered when it rests at its final position at the night of the sinking. Now going back to the officer's quarters or the boat deck, it has deteriorated to the point where even the walls are falling out in the boat deck. It's kind of sad to see the wreck slowly deteriorate during our lifetime. But as the Titanic slowly deteriorate over the years, we can consider ourselves lucky to even see the wreck itself with its mostly recognizable features. Not before long, Titanic's wreck will soon be just a bunch of piled rusted metal at the bottom 
of the Atlantic. Not much more different than the other countless ships that have been lost to the Atlantic. Anyways, thank you for watching part 1 of the Titanic wreck analysis. I'll be doing the stern soon. I'll also be releasing a new what if video in a long time and I know you guys love the what if videos so stay tuned for that and I'll see you on the next one.